Joining us now is NBC News chief international analyst and former Supreme Allied Commander of NATO, Admiral James Davides. Uh, Admiral, I remember many conversations before the Israeli offensive started about how dense the population is there and how difficult it would be. You said this would be Fallujah on steroids, what we experienced in Iraq, that urban warfare is just that difficult. Now you've had the defense secretary, Jake Sullivan, and Tony Blinken meeting with the Israeli war cabinet, virtually pleading with them publicly and even more aggressively privately to target their killing, their shootings, their, their attack. And Mark Regev, you know, an experienced diplomat and political leader, uh, was saying that the Rafa strike in the south, it's supposedly a safe zone, was a targeted attack. As a military analyst, is there any way to go after the Hamas leaders that they want to get and still not have these kinds of civilian casualties, which are really in intolerable from a, more, from a humanitarian perspective, as well as politically now, you know, yeah. Secretary Austin warning them that they could, you know, be losing the war because of this. Indeed, uh, this is an absolute element in combat today. It is this global narrative, and Israel is losing. Uh, and it will affect them in terms of resources that they were able to receive. For example, you're already seeing a weakening of support here in the United States. It'll affect them long term economically if sanctions are applied to them. And it will also affect them in that every time an innocent civilian is killed, the military age male in that family is going to turn to Hamas and become a Hamas foot soldier. You can't kill your way to victory in a setting like this. And so what Israel needs to do, and that's the message that uh, Team Biden has been relaying, I think, very effectively in terms of outreach and balancing the private and the public, they have got to, the Israelis have got to reduce the numbers of collateral damage uh, count here, Andrea. And it's got to be done using more special forces, more precision guided strikes, um, and go after the leadership, but separate them from the population. It's very difficult to do. I do sense the Israelis are starting to move more in that direction because they realize if they don't, uh, they are going to lose this conflict in the eyes of the world, no matter how the facts on the ground come out. And Hamas has, you know, a huge propaganda advantage. The Hamas leaders, we're not talking about the Palestinian civilians in Gaza, but the, the visuals are just so yeah. um, horrendous that the suffering of the Israelis on October 7th and since their hostages have been taken, so many hostages, um, it, in, the, in terms of the public attitudes in Europe and the Middle East, it, it begins to fade. Yeah. It does. And if you're managing this conflict from uh, Jerusalem, you've got three things you've got to do, and they often come in conflict. One is you've got to continue the press to try and recover the hostages, either by negotiation or by finding them and extracting them in a rescue operation. Very hard. Number two, what you and I have been discussing, when you go into a zone like that and you assume control of it, you own the humanitarian challenge. They have got to continue to get the supplies in to maintain this population. And then third and finally, on the military side, they've got to go after Hamas, but kind of alongside that, Andrea, they have got to destroy, decommission these tunnels. The tunnels are the superpower of Hamas, and they must, the Israelis must knock those out explosively, flooding, whatever it takes. And they've got to do that in order to keep Israeli babies safe in their nurseries, something that um, failed them so dramatically on the 7th of October. Really tough challenges to knit those three things together. Yeah, the, the, the missions are conflicted because to go after the tunnels, you inevitably are killing civilians. And then we saw the tragedy of what happened with those three hostages. That is such a dramatic, horrific uh, example, you know, of friendly fire. 
Um, yeah. Let me turn to China briefly, because the U.S. and Chinese militaries have now spoken to each other for the first time in more than a year. Uh, communi military communications had been halted by China after former Speaker Pelosi's visit to Taiwan, which they took such huge offense at. And, of course, then after the, the spy balloon was shot down, communications were not going to get restarted easily. So, apparently, the new Joint Chiefs Chairman, General Brown, spoke with his Chinese counterpart today. This is a crucial change, given how aggressive they have been in the South China Seas and so many close calls yeah. that could become an accidental conflict. Indeed. And let's uh, give credit here to uh, the Biden administration. They pulled this off as a real deliverable from the summit about a month ago. Uh, General C.Q. Brown knows the uh, Pacific well. Um, I think he's a, a steady hand, and he is now in a real conversation with General Liu, uh, the head of the Chinese military. So this is uh, good news in reducing tensions strategically, operationally, and tactically, Andrea.